So we spoke to Mark Mobius, of course, uh, famous for his uh, views on emerging markets. He says he's ready to uh, start buying emerging market assets again. You uh, less keen on EM right now? We're less keen on EM indeed because we think the primary driver of EM assets on the short term is actually in Washington, is what the Fed does or doesn't do. And we, we, we investors are living a new paradigm right now uh, with a Fed that is much more centered on US fundamentals uh, in a kind of less cooperative mode with other central banks. So they will proceed with further tightening of monetary policy as a function of incoming data in the US. And as we speak, there is no reason to expect any slowdown in US growth. We do see, you know, emerging markets, the sell-off kind of started when, when U.S. yields stabilized. And now we're sort of hovering around this 3% level. Where do you expect yields to go now? And does that mean you expect uh, emerging markets to stay down? Well, we expect further normalization at the short end of the curve. Uh, and I think the most important development has been the recent rise in 10-year uh, uh, yields in Japan. Uh, it feels like the BOG uh, has started to uh, uh, relax the targeting of 0% yields uh, at the 10-year maturity bucket. Uh, as the long end of yield curves in the G3 and, and broadly speaking G7 markets uh, it is a global rate basically, the fact that rates are slightly uh, uh, rising in Japan uh, also puts some pressure um, on the Treasury market. We expect uh, actually um, uh, current uh, yields, the highs that we touched in May 2011 on the 10 year, and most importantly, 2020 on the 30 years, to actually be broken soon. Yeah, this is interesting because I was reading a, a list of questions. Uh, there's a Macro Man blog on the Bloomberg, and uh, uh, yesterday's uh, Macro Man blog was providing a list of questions to ask yourself as an investor. And one of them was about central banks, the Fed versus others, and said, you know, when is the BOJ going to become properly relevant again? You suggest then that it, it really is right now. Yes, it feels like the BOG indeed is back in the game. Uh, and and the, the, the zero percent targeting of a 10 year GGB has been a, a, a very strong anchor for global yields. Uh, this is moving now uh, in the context of an economy that still has momentum globally in spite of the trade tensions. Uh, so we see uh, yields actually uh, creeping higher. Which, which, um, which sectors do you see doing best here? I mean, we've seen a real bounce back in material stocks. We've seen a real bounce back here in Europe, I mean, in uh, car maker stocks. Obviously, they were really pressured down by the trade concerns, and that seems to have alleviated across indexes, so it's alleviated especially in those sectors that have been hit the hardest. Do you see any other uh, rebounds like that that are coming? Uh, well, actually, there is some rotation going on as the uh, uh, dollar is uh, uh, undergoing some consolidation. Uh, money is flowing back from uh, growth sectors back into more value-oriented sectors. Uh, we do not think this is going to be a long-lasting phenomena, uh, but we think uh, given how depressed those sectors were relative to the leaders of the, the, the market advance, uh, they were due for some kind of rotation. Um, let me ask you about the dollar, because clearly the dollar is a key factor in, uh, in a lot of the... We started talking about emerging markets, but it's, uh, it's important to a number of assets. Um, I've got a chart here. This is 4079 on the Bloomberg. Uh, the, even higher yields in the US, and we've talked about yields being above 3% and staying there, that's not really helping the dollar. The dollar hasn't been as strong in the last week or so as it had been previously. We see a couple of houses now calling uh, for a much weaker dollar into the year end. Where do you see the dollar heading from here, then, Eve? <laughs> We all know forecasting currencies is the most difficult thing, especially on short-term horizons. Uh, I think the fact that oversold assets, emerging equities, uh, European equities, which were actually trading not far off their yearly lows um, uh, recently, uh, requires the buying of those currencies, right? So mechanically, uh, when investors are short emerging markets, uh, tactically short as well European uh, markets, uh, European banks, uh, this requires the buying of, of euros, this requires the buying of uh, emerging currencies to rebalance portfolio. And I think these technical flow-driven uh, uh, movements in the short term overwhelm fundamentals such as uh, yield differentials. 